It's time for the grand finals here at TXP3. Saints X TXP has been a blast, and it all comes down to one final match. Pulsive going through the winner's bracket. They have looked unstoppable. On the other side, their challengers, Saints Gaming. They have been undeniably relentless on this lower bra bracket run that they've had. They go th from winners round one into the lower side of things, losing to Nobility to Rising, and it brings them all the way down the line into the grand finals yet again. They get their revenge versus Nobility. It goes to game five. They take down Chaos and their former teammate, or, you know, they're still teammate KB and they make that of round five again and now versus Pulsive haven't seen them play Pulsive since the beginning of their tournament all the way back in round one of their pool play and it was a very convincing win in that best of three but we've upgraded now it's going to be best of five and a bracket reset if need be for the Saints if they want to be TXP champions here in their hometown of Windsor and just as a reminder, my name is Seymour alongside me. We got Zare Bear again joining me. Zarin, how are you feeling here for the Grand Finals? You got your team. I know you're trying not to be biased yeah. here, but still, you got to be pumped for them. Oh, absolutely. And, and you know, they started off the tournament against Pulsive. They lost 2-0. Well. It seemed like things weren't just clicking right away. I mean, sometimes it just doesn't happen for, for this team. But, uh, I mean, the more matches that they played, they just looked more and more comfortable with each other, uh, more cohesive overall. And, I mean, coming from losers round one to make it all the way through everybody into the grand finals, a couple stressful moments, uh, a couple game fives, a obviously. Couple close ones. Yeah, but uh, we, the point is, so, you know, you get there any way possible yeah and they do exactly that and well we got ourselves a doozy of a series coming up it's going to be pulse and st Clair, and as we get the game a little bit organized we can get into the maps um six star hard point map one what are the some keys to this map well i you know st Clair, we've been kind of been around the team all weekends and they love rio you know I, they were big fans of our older mw3 maps before they got changed out you bring in rio you bring in vista and you bring in six star and they've still kind of hung around those rios they've been playing it all weekend for better or for worse they've been sticking with that and pulse if they know that and heading in towards this grand final it was one of the first things that they opted for was starting off with the six star as our map number one instead of the rio because they know that st Clair aren't as comfortable on that map so the fact that Pulsive have been sitting and waiting for this grand final rather than playing matches like St. Clair has time after time I mean it's been game five three zero, and then another game five Saints have had a lot of time on stage a lot of time for to sure. play this game today where Pulsive they've hit the stage they th went to game five almost got reverse sweep but then they've been sitting and waiting for things to kind of come back to this moment so going to that six star for map number one for pulsive i feel like that is the best way to kind of shift the saints off of their game and maybe give you a little bit of an edge here to start off this grand final yeah and going back to that group play match that happened yesterday pulsive did play six star hard point against st Clair. they won in I'd say semi-convincing fashion, and so they know that they're comfortable. It was on a 100 this map. point club. Was it a 100 point? It was a 100 point club. I thought they had like 130. At no, least. it was a 100 point club. I, I, it was hard to watch for the we'll Saints. But it, yeah. it, at the it, same it wasn't time, good for sure. at the same time, it was St. Clair. You know, mm -hmm. going into this one, I mean, it, and the whole kind of talk for this team is that they have been on a little bit of a hiatus since the collegiate season has ended. So I feel like you could put a little bit of an asterisk on that first match versus Pulsive. They are a completely different team since the start of this tournament. Uh, absolutely. And, uh, you know, what once once they did get in that groove and being able to be in the loser's bracket, it's just match after match after match. And so as you see the bracket, you see St. Clair all the way the second from the bottom in loser's round one. They suffered that tough loss late, late last night against Nobility Rising able to run it all the way through again a couple of game fives taking down nobility rising game five round 11 if you missed that yeah. uh just a few moments ago unbelievable run it has been too i mean i feel like lower round one st Clair they beat five tribe 3-0 and they kind of like 
took that upon themselves to become the Vibe Tribe because <laughs> versus Day by Day earlier this morning on one of the side streams, they were just having a blast with each other playing that that matchup. It was a very convincing 3-0 versus A Slim's teams. That brought them into play Chaos, KB and Exotic. And it went the distance. Their control and their search has been phenomenal this weekend. Hard points, we'll talk about that later. But their search and destroy brings them into that Karachi towards the end versus Chaos. It goes all the way to a 5-1 lead for the Saints. They get drawn out towards round number 10. They beat them. And then we get to see that search and destroy even evolve towards nobility rising they smoked nobility rising on that karachi search and destroy six to two so saint Clair, that, that as a game mode themselves has been giving them so much of an edge here when it does go to those round fives yeah and it's also strange because with the saint Clair team um some events it's the hard points that carry the load and the and the controls that carry the load but this event here at toronto xp it's been all about snds but we got a hard point coming up first, Colin. We do. We got to talk a little bit about this Pulse of Team. I don't feel like we're talking about yes. them enough because coming out of the winner's bracket, they have dominated this TXP tournament. And that has gone, I, I'd say, a little bit unnoticed for us as commentators because we haven't been hyping up this Pulse of Team as much as I think we should. They showed up to TXP. They Nobody had them in their cars to win the event. We expected them to be good, but we didn't think they'd be this good. God Bowser has put together a God squad here to work through this TXP3. And coming to Canada, I mean, they look on fire. So starting off and towards the six-star hard point, I'm looking at them to really lead the pacing of this game. And I'm looking at God Bowser himself repping the name of Looney to lead the charge. Absolutely. On fire, they have been. Pulsive off to a de decent start here. They do have map control. They don't have the time on the board yet. St. Clair again. More trades. But Pulsive, they dominated St. Clair the first time around. Can they do so again? We're about halfway through point number one as we start to look towards rotations. This is a big battle right here, and Wiser's going to be the man to win that one. Yeah, it's big from Wiser's. Another standout from this Pulsive team. Wiser's, Driz, and Rispy have just... They've just looked smooth as butter when it comes to playing through these hard points. Their timings are on point. They work really fast, and I think they just... Uh, they work into a way where God Bowser doesn't have to be that standout player throughout this tournament. And I think that's where Pulsive just looks so comfortable against some of these teams that are looking to put them to the test. And for Saints Gaming, so far off to a good start. They're going to be able to fight from the front for this P2, but they're not able to take the players out of the back. Priestley goes above and beyond to make this a little bit back and forth here, but can't Priestley hold on for longer. Yeah, and another player that doesn't get talked about enough is Rispy. He has had himself a fantastic event and already a fantastic Fantastic game number one as Driz slides in, grabs two for himself, and Pulsive gonna retain control of P2 as St. Clair try to battle towards the front. Yeah, rotations as well. St. Clair should have the spawns, but they're being threatened. Wiser's is hitting the full rotation towards the bottom side of that minimap with 15 seconds left, and if he can find these kills, St. Clair, it's gonna be red alert for them. So you can see Wiser's gonna win that first one. St. Clair drawing their attention back. They're gonna clear out their spawn, but they've given up that space. Bendy's gonna recognize that. There's a very heads-up play from Bendy to turn on a dime, and with the help of Priestley, they do battle back in towards this hard point, and this should be a good time for Saints to look to to flip the lead here. Yeah, almost a really good opportunity for Pulsive to win those spawns, but St. Clair executing really nice as Brandon with a three-piece. Bendy sitting on the time. You see St. Clair starting to spread out to get some control of the middle of the map. And you see Pulsive just trying to attack the front. Kind of a 2-2 split here as they try to break this point. Yeah, they get in from the front too. Looney, or God Bowser, looking to reinforce this one. He has help. Renetti in the hands. Bendy is sent back to the respawn. 25 seconds. St. Clair not able to flip this lead just yet. Priestley's going to take one last look at it. But as he goes down, Pulsive should get themselves the scrap time here. And St. Clair, they need to set up over towards the statue. Nacho going to be here on the heady. And they have a lot of middle map control. So Pulsive, with their lead, they will have some time to dissect this, but it has to be through the middle of the map. Yeah, middle of the map, you're absolutely right. That is the key to this brand new P4 that we've seen with the latest update on MW3. Priestley holding strong right now, gets one, but Rispy with a nice trade. Bendy cleans one up, pinching on the flank. Brandon, again, Wiser's last one remaining here. Tags up two, gets the third two. Huge kill, huge three-piece from Wiser's. 
gets Pulsive, control a P4 just like that. And St. Clair, they're wiser for it. I mean, they got to show some respect to this player. Parisley, some beautiful shots, but Ooh. it is going to allow for the rest of St. Clair to rally behind that back and towards the hard point. A really scary moment there for St. Clair as they just get wiped by one single player, but they should have a chance here to threaten this lead of Pulsive. And Pulsive will not give it away for free, knowing how close this P1 rotation is. They're going to take one last battle for it. Looney, nice shots there. God Bowser's going to take care of that with the help of Driz. They do get in towards that scrap time, holding their lead by seconds. And we're going into the second set of rotations with Pulsive. Still looking like they're the favorites here inside of the hard point, but St. Clair are playing it very close. Yep, and we've noticed very early on in this game that Pulsive are not afraid to have a 2-2 split when they're trying to break this point. You see two players pushing towards P4, two pushing towards the front of the time. It's worked out well for them so far as they have this narrow lead. And you see Benny trying to get some shots into Driz, but he's just going to stay alive, getting attacked from top blue area. It's all Pulsive right now swarming P1. Yeah, and Pulsive, they break. Brandon fighting from the pool side. He's going to be spotted by God Bowser, who is on three in a row, looking for number four. Lots to do here for God Bowser, but Brandon puts it to rest before that streak turns into a cruise. So a whole 20 point lead and counting for Pulsive as they haven't yet fully been able to flip these spawns out, but you have Rispy in the back line hunting down these members. This should send St. Clair spawns in absolute shambles as they're spawning up towards the past P5 Hill in the bottom right side of the mini map. Yeah, I mean, a big storyline. The first time these two teams met on this map was the P2 battles and Pulsive every single time we're able to win that. So far in this game, going the same way. Big kill out of Wisers, who's already up to 15 in this one as Pulsive looking to build on this 34-ish point lead. Brandon trying to work the back, has some support around him, but Rispy with the huge two, looking for three, but two Saints players shut him down. Priestley with two back for himself, but no. Twos and twos all around the board, Colin, as God Bowser going huge around the time. Multi kills for multiple players. Nacho's going to slide in for one last shot. Has teammates around, but St. Clair are struggling at getting in towards this hard point. 23 seconds, and now the Saints thinking about the rotation. They spawn up towards the left side. They should be able to get in a really good position to, again, get majority of this time over at P3. They did a fantastic job last time at making sure that those spawns stayed in their favor. And it looks like Pulsive trying to work their way in. They will be shut down at the gates. So Saints going to be in for the first couple of seconds here. Pulsive are spawning all the way on the other side of the map. Yep, same story again. St. Clair set up early for P3 after Pulsive with the dominant P2. And here's that, well, they don't do the 2-2 this time, the 3-1, but the team kill comes in, four go down for Pulsive. Nice clean wipe from St. Clair. Gonna give them at least 15 seconds of time as they gotta start pushing out the left side of the map here. Nacho gonna get a lot of info, but those glass steps not covered. And now a team nade coming in too, so here's the potential break for Pulsive from the front. Yeah, St. Clair gonna be working quick off the spawn to see if they can help out. Priestley laying down, Renetti not enough for the second one. It's back and forth, Rispy 1v1 for the rest of this time. And Bendy's a little bit late here, so any second for Pulsive is good time that St. Clair can't get Driz now. Holding on for this scrap, they'll be cleaned up and the Saints will walk away with the rest. Over towards P4, again, St. Clair, back versus Nobility Rising. They were struggling at getting these rotations. You love to see that Nacho is so prominent at being the first one to this fourth hill. This time it won't pay off, but it is nice to see it put in towards practice. St. Clair down by 40. Gonna have to break this one from the P2 side of the map. Really great opportunity for Pulsive. They actually got a split spawn, one in office, and one all the way back P3. So that allowed them to have a natural pinch on this new hard point. As Nacho able to get one back, sliding at the time, able to get two, looking for that third. Driz last one up, gets taken down, and Nacho breaks the point on a three streak. Halfway to that cruise missile, if he can get the job done, but so hard to do with the SMG. Into the contest, Weiser is shut down. Brandon finds a nice angle. Priestley is going to take down a third with that Semtex, and Driz has to show some respect wanting to control that middle map for the side of Pulsive you have a player flanking in Bendy and St. Clair hoping that Bendy can get a little bit of work done on this flank and shake Ooh. things up God Bowser with a disgusting snap and trades back and forth will leave Pulsive in favor of this rotation in the third set Pulsive leading by 30 points plus St. Clair gonna need a quick break here Brandon trying to work his way around Yep, we're getting into the nitty-gritty 
once again late in this six star. Wow, Rispy with a three piece off screen, looking for that fourth, but just trying to get away with his life. Nacho able to stay alive still, looking for Hister, but Driz shuts him down, keeps the time white as finally Bowser catches up. And gonna be able to soak a little bit as St. Clair start to coordinate their push. Yeah, as we're heading into the last couple of hills and St. Clair struggling to kind of put together these breaks without, you know, being dwindled down to one or two members just whole grasping at straws for time. It has to be talked about the sub battle that we're seeing between Pulsif and St. Clair. Rispy and Wisers are just all over the place. And the subs of Pulsif are relentless when it comes down to the pressure. St. Clair, you don't really see that right now from Nacho, 18 and 24. Bendy, 16 and 21. A little bit lacking when it comes down to the firepower. They can put things together, only down by 50. In this third set, St. Clair, they have the capabilities here to bring things back. They have to worry about the flank now. Certainly do. Finally set up early for P2. Priestley with a big win in the back. Gonna have reinforcements, but Driz has reinforcements himself. Rispy gets that player lurking on those back glass steps, and Brandon trying to able to, trying to get a two-piece. Can't quite get it done, so it's gonna be Pulsive with control. Only 25, sorry, 35 seconds needed for them to secure this game one. Nacho, again, looking to be the hero. Bendy behind him, they break. And Brandon with the cherry on top should solidify some time. Only one more member. It's Looney just making sure St. Clair can comfortably get this time for free. Over towards the rotation, St. Clair, they get blessed with the spawns in the pack, but they are in a three versus four. Looney a little bit disconnected from this. God Bowser not able to help his team just yet, but still with Driz. Looking to see if they can ship away at some of these members. Yeah, there was a lot of one-on-ones there towards the back. St. Clair able to win those. That kind of left Driz by himself in a, a tricky situation as Rispy, the only one really close to this point right now, but those one-on-ones are now going the way of Pulsive. Rispy with another big win in the back. The team name comes through, but the control is there for Pulsive. They're trying to close this one out here. Yeah, they want to put it away for the six star, and they have the time still here to win out. Bendy's gonna have to dedicate this one. Brandon alongside him. God Bowser hitting the flank, but he's only good for the one. Three members still for the Saints to look to get into this hard point. And that's okay for Pulsive with that winner's advantage. All they need to do is slay out, keep this one mixy, and look to the rotations. Nacho's not able to finish off those players. We will see another hill. But Pulsive are only gonna be seconds away from winning this map. Seconds away. Gonna be about six to seven-ish seconds as we move into P4 for the third time on this map. Nacho already pushed up in a good spot, but you see three players already pressured from Pulsive towards the P4. Now they, it's up to St. Clair to break. Nacho's in, three go down, that's gonna be four, and that's gonna do it. And that's it for map number one. Pulsive pull away with the series here. Map number one was a doozy. Back and forth throughout a, a good majority of this, but for Pulsive, just steadily holding on to that lead that they got from that first set of rotations. Uh, St. Clair struggling when it comes down to the firepower here on Six Star. We know this isn't their best map, but you saw that you know a couple of those members throughout a lot of the hills just not able to keep up with the side of Pulsive. So many times with the, the subs for this team, I think Driz, the only one that was actually holding on to that MCW for majority of the map. You had a triple sub set up for Pulsive and they were all over the place. Offset timings as well. Lots of flanks that just paid off and I think for the Saints, you have to wipe that one away because you're looking at this Pulsive team who have been fantastic in the respawns and it's really be been because of how different each of these individuals are off of their timing. So many good moments from Rispy, Wisers, God Bowser, just all over the place where St. Clair couldn't track them. Well, you talked about the individual efforts, everybody chipping in for Pulsive. It's been the storyline this entire event. It really I has. Mean, no one has really popped off uh, or had or simply carried the team to a win. It's always been a very across the board good effort from the squad and, and you know they put together another very good performance here in a hard point and they come out swinging here in game one now two maps away from the grand finals from being champions Wins. here yes. at txp3 it's going to take us into the search and destroy now i think we're heading to rio yes map number two and st Clair 
it's no surprise so far that they're losing that map number one. I think it has been kind of the story against these top three teams that the respawn hasn't been the best of them for the hard point. It's the search and destroys that have been a different tale. We're heading in towards this Rio now. You can look towards some of these players, Nacho especially, to find that rhythm once more. Nacho not having the best map number one there on six star, really struggling against the subs of uh, Pulsive, but you really look towards him as a player to really stand out for St. Clair, put some of these members on Pulsive on a leash, try to sl slow them down a little bit, at least on this real map. It's going to be tough, very difficult for sure, but you have to see Nacho turn things around if you want to see the St. Clair Saints take a map off of this Pulsive team. Yeah, you're absolutely right, and Nacho Nacho's the key disruptor on this map, and you know, being, being on the defensive side over towards the B site is a difficult challenge. I mean, you got nades and stuns constantly going over you, especially in this first round for St. Clair on D. Oh, sorry, uh, for Pulsive on D, you got to be prepped for those nades. So you, I expect a little bit of a slow push here for Pulsive going on the offensive side and in towards mid. Here we go, round one. Priestley, 9 HP, gets away, but Pulsive are on B already. They're looking for the plants, and they want a little bit more posturing over towards Zig there, seeing if they can draw first blood, and they will do that. Parisley ends up going down. It's going to be a retake, 3v4, make it a 2v4. Nacho ties us back up, gives him a chance here. Brandon needs to stay alive. Yeah, Brandon trying to work this left side of the map. Usually a common spot for Brandon as uh, trying to get any sort of info, but now they need to get kills. 20 seconds and counting. Nacho Working around this back, Eski's pinch, trying to pinch his back bridge too, but I don't think he's got enough time. Uh, he doesn't have enough time, and now he doesn't have Brandon even, so Pulsive, they can scatter, hide away, wait for Nacho to make that mistake and secure that round number one. Just off the gates, it is a bat out of hell when you watch this Pulsive team, how fast they get over towards that B's site. They back up St. Clair all the way down and towards that P3 area of their spawn, and uh, they don't stop there. They jump right into the deep ends, and they're, they're finding value in that aggression, taking down Priestley right away, uh, getting a second kill onto Bendy as well, forcing Nacho to kind of make those hero plays. And, and, you know, he did a good job bringing it into a 2v2, but giving up that much map control, it, it's not easy. And I think for Nacho, the overextension wasn't a bad call, but you would have loved to see him play a little bit more with Brandon. Yep. Fearless is this Pulsive squad in Search and Destroy. Their best game mode by far, but man, have they put it together all weekend long. But going to be a quick plant here from the side of St. Clair. It's going to be a 4v4, except this time it's going to be on A. We'll see how St. Clair elect to defend it, but good opening kill there from God Bowser. And Brandon in a little bit of a tricky situation. Doors are going to be open to team kill. Still traded. Numbers for Pulsive. As you have Nacho working onto the flank, Looney's going to sniff that out and it's going to leave Brandon in an unfortunate situation. 1v3, Driz hops the defuse, won't be shut down either. The team is there watching his back. And the kills, again, just flowing for Pulsive. Yeah, I mean, they're just winning their one straight up. And uh, a, a great team break there. They, Three of them pushing towards the back orange side, able to get that first kill was God Bowser on the opposite side. So it's just a whole bunch of looking opposite ways for St. Clair. They got every kill in that round. Even the team yeah. kill. Yeah. Even the they, team kill. Even the team kill. They're, they're w one of two deaths. Well, I guess two of three deaths. Uh, they're, I mean, great, great execution from Pulsive. We'll see what they elect to do here back on offense. Seems like that bomb's leaning towards the A site yeah. and a bit of a 3-1 split. They love to get Mixy Bendy. Oncoming traffic is going to be too much to deal with as Looney is just going to run right through him. And now for retake again, lesser numbers. Saints are struggling here. Right, there's a retake. Going to have to start from that garage. Nacho waiting for time to just bang out these doors. Yeah, 1v4. Not much he's going to be able to do here. Audible Q. And Nacho gets one, does get two though. Can't quite get away with his life and Pulsive just look undeniable. It is a disgusting that he gets that second kill. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but it's not enough. No. Um, and you cannot look towards Nacho to do everything. A 1v4 is just impossible in the grand finals. I, I, I say impossible, it's rare. It's never impossible to get a, a 1v4 for sure, but you just don't expect that from these players. 
and you need to start to see everybody else start to put some kills on the board. And donuts for the Saints. Three rounds into this Rio, and it just seems like they've been shocked, rocked by this Pulsive team throughout this grand final so far. They need to just start to get some confidence behind them, take it patient, dry out those first bloods and work off of that. One round out of the at a time might be the key. And well, there's that first blood you talked about. Nacho now with two. Bendy looking over him. The bomb's gonna go down. So a perfect opportunity for St. Clair to get their first round on the board. Knows that there's one in the back. Now Bendy's gonna get info on both, but Rispy able to get one back. And now they have a little bit of time to work with. And Benji is just stuck there. Priestley with the team shots will trade out Rispy, but the fact that Rispy got that first kill onto Nacho. Absolutely disgusting. Driz now 1v2. Too much to deal with and just not enough health to deal with it. And finally, St. Clair put a round on the board. Again, it comes off of just a very strong breakout from Nacho, this time leading the team over towards A. Nacho gets the first kill and the second kill. Bomb gets planted. St. Clair, knowing that both players are on the flank, you know, there's only one way they really have to look in that post plant scenario. They they all turn around, watch for those members, and they just trade effectively. That is a strong round from the Saints. First time we've seen that so far on this reel. And uh, again, it's, you just, you're looking at Nacho here being that difference maker. Pulsive have been good to shut them down, back onto the attack, and they want to hit this B-side again. Yep, the aggression so key, but the team nade comes in, Dri Driz drops. Not sure what happened there, perhaps a bad bounce. And just like that, it's a 2v4 once again. Wiser's getting aggressive with Rispy. Looking to cut down some of these Saints members, but not to be. St. Clair going back to back in rounds now. Cutting this three round lead down to just one. Off the back of that first team, Nate, it definitely puts you in a bad spot, but it helps when Brandon follows up with a kill of his own, making it a two versus four. St. Clair. You maybe want to call them a little bit lucky there, but the fact that they're able to play damage control and not allow anything to fall away, it's two good rounds from them. Yeah, I mean, we talked about making mistakes against good teams, and right there, St. Clair takes advantage. There's a free first blood, essentially. Brandon gets a little bit aggressive up towards mid and gets a kill, so that allowed St. Clair to control the outcome of that round. But God, Bowser, we talked about aggression. Here he comes down the bottom white van ramp. Looking for that first blood, but Priestley draws one with the nade. Bendy follows up with one. Rispy looking for two. He gets it, but another team kill oh, comes no. in. What is going on with Pulsive? Team kill for the past three rounds. That's going to put things into a 1v2 for Driz. Brandon and Bendy both going to double up, and they're going to actually sit inside garage. They have eyes on the bomb. Driz has a lot to check to get onto this, but a lot of time to isolate these members. And it is possible with this MCW to line them both up. Yeah, Driz, he's right right around the bomb site, so he's in a good spot. Oh! <laughs> Might have got one or two bullets in that second player, but the high-low paid off. I told you, it's possible to line them yes. up. Yes. <laughs> high-low here from Brandon and Bendy, and... Yeah, Brandon's going to get those final Ooh. shots. But you thought for a second that Driz yeah. was going to do that. And that could have been the stake through the heart for the Saints team. Uh, Driz, really tough kill. Rispy getting those two as well, giving Driz that chance for the 1v2. That is huge. I mean, Rispy has just been lights out on Pulsive. And let's see if he can maybe put together a round as they have taken three rounds in a row, and then lost three rounds in a row. So what kind of adaptations here for Pulsive? Obviously, they want to avoid those team kills, but they're just going to go for the tried and true quick plant on to B. Yeah, this is exactly what you want to do for Pulsive. This is what worked in your first two offenses, so let's go back to it. They do exactly that 4v4 now, right around the time. You see St. Clair nice and spread out, but Pulsive playing nice and tight, holding all angles. Yeah, it's going to be Brandon, hopefully open things up. Unfortunately, Priestley just a little bit ahead of the curve. Now Brandon trying to find a way in off the back of the success of Bendy and Nacho. Driz in a 1v3. 24 seconds. Here come the Saints marching on in. And Bendy Kun with three kills to crack the code. Bendy yeah, I, I can guarantee you made that play call to push that Eskies. Brandy gets a little bit overzealous, gets caught out, but Nacho and Bendy following him up, able to clean up the rest. And St. Clair with their fourth straight round here. And after a very promising look from Pulsive to get the bomb down quick, he got all four players set up in mid. 
That might be the X factor for the Saints. If Bendy's playing good, the team plays good. As KB's shoes are tough to fill. But for the Saints, you know, they have flipped this into their lead now. That's four rounds in a row. Pulsive just falling flat on their face. All of a sudden, just a big shift of momentum. And they're going into what we saw a lot back in towards that hard point. Two, two splits for them working together, seeing if this tag team duo can, you know, catch a few kills on the map. But St. Clair opting to change things in their own right. Maybe we're getting some lobby issues. It doesn't seem like it. St. Clair just posted up in their spawn. And don't necessarily hate that from St. Clair. Bendy, unfortunately, gets caught out uh, from that player in you as Nacho trying to get some shots in, but that long range SMG, you can't always get blessed with those shots from that deep as St. Clair gonna play a little bit slow, but they are leaning towards A. And it's a double up over towards boxes. It'd be tough for Brandon to get over towards A, but he doesn't even get past Rispy. 2v4, Priestley fighting against three. He drops Driz to finish off that kill and Pulsive with a flawless round. Bring things back into a tie game. Yeah, really good answer back from Pulsive. They, I mean, they they read the patience from St. Clair, so they decided to be patient themselves. They read the pressure on the map and just played the gunfights accordingly, and they, they drew that first blood. Uh, Bendy got caught lacking a little bit towards Vending, and from there, they just held irons, they read the pressure, and cleaned up the rest. It really seems like, yeah, and it's weird to say, but Pulsive, when they are winning these rounds, they are dominant round yeah. wins. It never comes into the 1v1 scenarios. Uh, St. Clair, they really have to grind for their rounds. And those four that they got, it was not easy. But for Pulsive there, they make it look like a walk in the park. Winning that defense. For the offense, let's see if they can go back to back. They're going to take their sights over towards A. A couple shots trading all across the site. But it's Priestley for the first blood. Rispy now kicking things into gear. Not trading out. Bendy wins that fight. Now you're stuck if you're Pulsive. And it's just Driz to try to battle out. Two cases right there where the players just stopped shooting. They thought they had the kill, but couldn't complete it. And St. Clair able to take advantage again as Nacho in your kill cam. Going to clean up the last player here. Well, St. Clair able to get their fifth round. Yeah, fifth round on the board for the Saints as they've shifted back in towards the driver's seat of this Rio search and destroy. They went four in a row. Pulsive continuing to make them work for it, but in that round, St. Clair looked damn good on that crossfire. Now once the attacking side, can they win out? Tie us up in this grand final and prolong this to a fourth map. Priestley heading over towards A with the rest of the squad. Couple shots there. Priestley's in trouble. He needs help, but it's going to be the nade to drop first blood. That's God Bowser now getting aggressive for two. His teammates arriving. Rispy, though, alongside Wisers. They're going to be traded out. Well, Driz able to get the final two there off cam, but that that's all on God Bowser right there. He gets two, and he somehow gets away with Stays his life. Alive. And look at this. If Drizzy, Drizzy, if Driz wasn't on the flank there, that's St. Clair probably with a real chance of winning that round, but Driz biding his time, waiting for that chance to flank, and the timing pays off there. God Bowser holding them in that position as well, like you said. Well, a very familiar spot for St. Clair. Round 11. Higher stakes here in the grand finals of Toronto XP. Driz and company really working this left street. Saints have been lights out in these round 11 scenarios. But first blood for Rispy. He's looking for two. He'll grab it. Renetti now. He wants to dance with God Bowser. They're leading. 1v4 for Nacho. 10 and 7. It's got to be 14. Pulsive looking for a 2-0 lead. And they have him trapped. Nacho's going to slide out. And that's it. Daggers in. Pulsive taking the search and destroy round 11. And they never give up. Never give up. Never back down. Uh, what a play call, sending three players towards the B Street, just perfectly reading the St. Clair push towards B. Just f absolutely flawless counter. And they get up into bridge, you get all of that control, you catch a player off guard trying to get the bomb down, and that would just about seal the round as Nacho with an impossible situation, an impossible task ahead of him. And you got to think about to the start of this game, the way the Saints started the search and destroy, and the way they ended the search and destroy. 
jumbling over my words here. I ended the search and destroy. It was two very different teams when it came down to the slaying across the board. It was Nacho really keeping them alive in those first three rounds. Things don't go their way. They put four in a row, suddenly pulsive. They look like they're beatable. And then something clicks in them. And they look unstoppable again. Rispy getting the timing over towards you. St. Clair had no idea that there was going to be a player to slide in like that. You saw them go for the quick plant over towards B. And the fact that Rispy not only turns it into a first blood, but he gets those shots into the second player. Working St. Clair like a fiddle right now. And that third player as well, it was God Bowser and Rispy. The team shots flowing for for the side of pulsive it just it looks like when this team is winning there's nobody that can stop them yeah i mean like you said just flip of a switch and that's how good this team has been the entire event and despite losing four three rounds it is so unbelievably easy to lose complete composure after losing four series rounds when you were up 3-0. So the fact that they could literally just turn it around like that, uh, insanely impressive. And to close it out when it mattered most, they got the job done. Yeah, and I mean, now for St. Clair, not only do they have to reverse sweep inside of this first best of five, but then they have to play a second best of five as well. So for the Saints, they got a long road ahead of them, Pulsive setting themselves up for success here in the grand finals of TXP3. We're going to cut things to a break when we get set up for a control st Clair looking for that turnaround and they need to have a talk here we're gonna head to a break we'll be back with more after
And here we go. Pulsive up 2-0 in the grand finals here at TXP3. Just as a reminder, this is not a best of seven like we're Ooh. used to. This is a best of five with a potential bracket reset. So St. Clair now facing elimination. Pulsive looking for the trophy. Saints needing that reverse sweep, and that's taking us to Invasion Control. Yep, Invasion Control we go. We've seen a lot of success for both teams on this map at different points of the tournament. And well, Pulsive so, so close to securing this Toronto XP Championship, this TXP3 Championship. Long awaited so far throughout this weekend, but man, what a weekend it has been. But still, tons of time for St. Clair to try to rally back. Yeah, but it's been tough. Weiser is Rispy, just, I mean, two players who have showed up and showed out for this Pulsive team. God Bowser, he has put himself together, a God squad, like I said earlier. And then this invasion control. Yeah, St. Clair, I mean, they feel a little bit more comfortable heading over towards Vasion, but I just don't know if it's going to be comfortable enough. Rispy locking down the water side of the map, forcing St. Clair over towards this B zone, but the numbers are here. The bodies for Pulsive just not dropping, and they are cutting down the Saints. Yep, all members up as God Bowser draws first blood, but Brandon going huge right now on top broken. Knows he needs to stay alive, pre-fires that player, but Weiser's with a pre-fire for himself with the Renetti. And now Nacho just trying to get through mid. And 20 seconds already left to go in this round, and St. Clair really with nothing showing. And Nacho looking for a little bit of map control. Knows there's a player on the other side of the barrier, now looking to sneak away. Jumps out for the challenge. Shots are there, but nothing really to write home about. Saints reach the A zone. Brandon's here for a little bit of backup, too. Won't be able to take out the player flanking, but Priestley still alive. Seven seconds left. Onto the A zone they go. Maybe a little bit of zone progression, but it's all up to Priestley really going above and beyond. And there is too many pulsive members around him Ooh. really to deal with that. Wiser. Uh, he just shoots a little bit different, even with the Renetti. Yeah, championship on the line, and I gotta say, we, during that break, I was listening to those pulse of guys. They said, "Get the confetti ready. They are ready to close this one out." And a great showing there. I don't even think Priestley got that tick onto A. Just a dominant, dominant defensive round. Wiser with that long range, Gunny with that Renetti. An absolute masterclass right now from Pulsive. Six and two from Wiser. Six and two from God Bowser. Rispy and Driz. Not too much they had to do. Rispy really just needed to force those spawns, and he did exactly that. Pulsive swap into the attack. It looks like it's going to be one sent into Cafe, three hitting B. So they want to capture that B zone right off the rip. Rispy trades out. Brandon going to catch uh, God Bowser before he moves over towards Laundry. But the side of Pulsive, they're onto the B zone, and they had a little bit of a stack. So that first segment already locked in. Yeah, we see Priestley and Co. coming off a of spawn, just pushed so, so far back. And the presence in DVD is so critical, too. And that's a big win out of Rispy. Stays alive. God Bowser follows that one up. Priestley drops there in bottom treehouse. Now it's all on Bendy to try to catch these players rotating out. Not going to happen. Trying to fill that spot is Nacho. As you see, the B cap's going to come in. Ooh, okay, interesting. Uh, point to sh take a couple extra shots in that body there, but nevertheless, be cap for both. Sometimes you have to like weigh that is that body shot really deserved? <laughs> or are you just a little bit upset maybe? And I, I think, you know, it's the latter end there for Brandon yeah. as they has just been getting thwomped across this grand final so far. Brandon letting him know that the fire is not out just yet. Rispy going to be caught through laundry and St. Clair slowly working their way out of their spawn. Lives are even. And there's only a minute 50 for Pulsive to try to work this A zone. We've seen it countless times this year. The A zone is not an easy egg to crack. So hopefully for the Saints, this is where they can put their foot down and say enough's enough. Yeah, not a great start to putting your foot down there is... Weiser's able to grab two for himself, and you just, again, you look at the bottom left, that mini-map, all control right now. Three-quarters of the map in control of Pulsive, but you see player number four, Priestley, going to be super, super, super important, and that he is able to get that third kill, clears Pulsive out as one player remains towards back gas. Yeah, not just yet. Weiser's, Weiser's gets two. So Saints most likely spawning in towards the laundry. <laughs> 
That is going to allow them to reinforce this control zone with Pulsive working their way down this blue street. Nacho has to turn around. Watch for Glass. Wiser's going to be spotted. Still alive. Gets across and Drizz there to back him up. Shots are good to take down Nacho. And the pressure's out. Cruise Missile called in. Priestley's going to get caught. That leaves Brandon now onto the zone. Lots of work to do and he's already found the two kills. That might be enough to give him a little bit of space here for the team to get back to him. Yep, you see Wiser's just staying alive. Gonna get caught out though, but good kill there from Priestley. And now it's gonna be Pulsive trying to collapse onto the point, but St. Clair continue to fill up the kill feed as Rispy, last one up, anywhere close to this point. Look at Bendy. Not a great control, but He's keeping the eyes on him for now. Brandon still winning fights four in a row. The second cruise missile from Wisers was invested and now it's down to time. 8v7, five seconds left. Everybody from Pulsive, they just gotta run. Hope they can touch the zone. St. Clair won't let them. And that stops the offense of Pulsive, keeps us tied up in the control. St. Clair not letting them run away with it just yet. And on top of everything, they burned both streaks yeah. from Pulsive in that round. Brandon is frying right now, 14 and 6. and I yeah. heard him get loud. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we did hear him from here. So perhaps a little bit of fire, a little bit of fire that's needed for St. Clair to take this map three. But again, still a long way to go. Pulsive on the unfavored offensive side. They do get the B cap, so they do have the tick advantage already. But as we move in to this round number three, it's up to St. Clair to do the same. Over towards B. Early aggression for Saints, as they want to get the zone and get a little bit of progression towards that round five defense. Potentially walking away with an offensive win should set them up for that success. Brandon, nice shots helping with Priestley. The connection arrives there and it's two down for Pulsive. Looking to work a flank through dark. Brandon's watching it and that's six in a row. Cruise missile now for Brandon and he can stack this zone. The flank gets cleaned up so it's all eyes forward for the Saints. Yeah, you see Nacho actually on the opposite side of the map just pulling the attention from Pulsive away just a little bit. Big win from him too. That's two on the point. B's gonna get capped here any second, but here comes A as well. That's four in a row for Nacho. Bendy helping out. It's arrived and St. Clair fighting battles all over the map right now. Bendy looking to help out Nacho. It just won't get there in time. Brandon reaching across. He's gonna slide on in. Bendy towards the laundry. Won't win out versus God Bowser. And now Pulsive, they've worked their way out of their spawn and they've cleared Saints from the A zone. Yep, good regain there from Pulsive. Now they can take a few seconds, breathe a little bit, start to work their way up the map as Nacho trying to battle it out. God Bowser drops, but still trying to stay up. His player number five, that's Rispy, who's again, has been so good all series long. He's good, but Saints are here to play. Priestley, a second win. If you might say, slides out with Renetti. He's gonna find a second one there. Bendy makes it three, and it's gonna be down to Rispy to hopefully make that hero play. Cut down a few of these members as they try to cross and make it tough for St. Clair to get on towards the Zay zone. Brandon's in. Renetti at the ready, but Rispy's is shooting a little bit better there. He's gonna clear out Brandon. And Pulsive are able wow. to set things up on another defense towards A. Yeah, good shots from Rispy again. Again, Pulsive. Another opportunity, again, on their heels, but able to relieve the pressure. Now can slowly but surely make their way up the map as St. Clair are going to start working down the B Street side. You see those close ice cream spawns. They need to work one side of the map. They're going to have maybe one, maybe two hits uh, for this A point. And time dwindling down. They need some kills quick. Yeah, you got to think that that cruise missile might even come in handy for Brandon. As Looney is still alive. Uh, God Bowser gets not just one, but two kills in DVD. And for Nacho, he just cannot full send it over towards the gas station because of that. Rispy's on four in a row. Now you're down to 35 seconds. This is last fight for St. Clair to play at full strength. Yeah, and you see Nacho getting lost in their spawn right now, but good kill from Rispy. And you see the all flooding in from the laundry side. Nacho can go absolutely massive here, but expected, called out. Driz takes him down. Looney grabs another pressure relief once more. It's all up to Bendy to get this point and stop the time. No one else even close to the point. And Bendy has to go big here. Rispy's hoping to clean this member up. The MCW's out and the team shot's gonna finish that off. Three go down for St. Clair and Pulsive setting themselves up for championship point as they go up 2-1 in the control. 
And depending on this offensive round, they may have just secured themselves a defense round five. Yep, Sinclair are gonna have to completely shut them down if they want to have defense for round five. But Pulsive, with how they've looked so far, it's hard to say that they won't get at least two ticks here in game number three. They got the tournament on the line. They want to close it out here. They got an offense, so a bit of work to do, but still an opportunity for them to close it out. Just amassing eight hours today on Sunday. As this has been a blast. Pulsive looking to sweep their way to the trophy right now as they hop onto the offense for Invasion. B is on their sights, and they're going to force stack this one. Driz finds the first blood. God Bowser, a second one, clears out DVD and St. Clair. They are collapsing right now. They know where Nacho is, but they don't have to fight for it. Nacho's going to have to go at them himself, but he will take down Rispy. The rest of Pulsif, they've pushed past B, trying to get towards this A zone. Here they go. Focus now towards A, player in the back hits Driz, gets one, tags up another, can't quite get the second Brandon there for the reinforcement. So St. Clair able to push Pulsive back out of their base, and you're gonna start to see that shift to the left side of the map for Pulsive, all those purple players heading back towards B. They wanna guarantee that capture and give themselves an extra minute here. Priestley now, We're trying to work Treehouse, but it's a little bit of a stalemate. A little bit of a stalemate, 45 seconds. Time is stopped there. Bendy watching from Ice Cream. He's going to hit the flank here. Trying to time this right. They're going to line up. Nice shots there from Bendy. No kills, though. God Bowser turning around his wristy, and the kills, they're flowing for Pulsive. It's three down. Make it a fourth Ooh. one, too. Priestley's going to be spotted, and that is a stack over towards B. Everybody moving forward for Pulsive. Looney, he's inside rugs. Everybody moving forward. Looney again in a good spot. That's Bowser. Just needs to stay alive basically until this B zone is captured. And already two players towards bottom blue for Pulsive. Bowser gets one. Weiser opens up with another. Bendy needs to stay alive. It's only him and Brandon left towards A. And now Pulsive complete control of bottom blue. One minute and 20 seconds for St. Clair to push this to a round number five. They know they're surrounded and there's a lot to do. So everybody looking to pull their weight. Looney trying to find some time, and he's going to jump across. 8 HP has to wait for the help to arrive. Priestley keeping things in, uh, intact for the likes of the Saints. Rissy's going to be sent back over towards the gas station, seeing if he can finesse a kill. He will. Still alive. Now Bendy has to go back, see if he can clear this player out. Yeah, Bendy. So much work for him to do. Big kill, but no, he runs out of bullets, gets caught changing weapons as well. And still Pulsive have complete control of rugs. All these players scrambling in the back. Nacho gets one, but more reinforcements, more purple players on the map. Driz sliding in on time, can't quite get the kill. Brandon needs to go huge, but Risky answers back with one. Again, stalemate a little bit for now. Time dwindling down though. The lives 14 to six for Pulsive. Brandon does enough to keep Saints alive. Lives not looking good for so St. Clair. They have to be conservative on what they have left. Five playing 13, 13 seconds here. Cruise missile called in. It lands on nothing. It forces them into the outside though. And Bendy keeping them away. Six seconds left. They got to run. But with Weiser going down, nobody's going to be able to touch. And St. Clair, they stay alive. Wow, that is now three streaks used by Pulsive on the offensive side that are, have not connected on anybody on the map. So uh, again, that's another small victory for the Saints going into this round number five, but it is going to be Pulsive with the defense going into this. It should be. Pulsive into the defense. Brandon still holding on to a cruise, cruise missile. From what we got all the way back into round two, he has been lights out inside the control but for the saints I, I, they need to find some kind of fire some kind of passion to push them over the hurdle now because an offense on invasion let alone a round number five that is not an easy thing to do let alone to this pulsive team so pulsive they just need one more round to close this out in a three game advantage Rispy's gonna open things up into a first blood here we go three players leaning towards the b site 
Bendy gets cleared out towards A. Nacho's gonna get control of DVD, but no. Driz shuts him down instantly. Priestley by himself. Again, just gonna have to back down, try to play his life, can't quite get the beat down. Impulsive, now complete control of B Street, complete control of the entire back half of the map, and here comes the spawn trap. You have to be careful of the spawn trap too. First things first, step number one is getting rid of God Bowser over towards that water side. You need to open yourself up inside of this map. And Brandon's looking to make that happen. Gonna catch God Bowser trying to rotate there. Nice shots from Brandon, but Rispy shooting a little bit straighter. 30 seconds left for the Saints. This is dire straits for the home team crowd. All or nothing. St. Clair Saints trying to extend this series any way they can, but time dwindling down. Brandon has been so big so far in this game, trying to hang on for his team, but Pulsive in control. However, he is on the B point now, and it looks like Pulsive playing this a little bit more passively as you see player number eight, God Bowser, slowly working his way through mid. Bendy slides away. Everybody setting up for flank here. God Bowser through dark. Bendy not able to find the second one. Driz now collapsing with the rest of the team. Nacho staying in it. Swaps on over. Renetti's able to clean up Driz, but the time is dwindling and God Bowser finishes up the rest. He's over towards Ice Cream. Saints are off spawn. Now, God Bowser able to go so huge. Seven seconds left. They need to run, but Bowser stays alive just long enough. Here come the reinforcements. Bowser with the huge team nade. It's going to be Rispy with the streak again. Not going to matter. Pulsive are your Toronto XP3 Grand Finals champions. And what a convincing way to do it. Nobody but Pulsive. They had one thing in mind, and that's win. They put together a squad capable of making it happen. They get tested one time, and that was against Nobility Rising. Almost facing the reverse sweep to drop them into the lower bracket. They show their resilience, and they hold strong. Into the grand finals, they meet the Saints, the home team heroes, and they put them six feet under. Now, as champions, they go across, couple fist bumps, feeling good. And there's no team here that deserves it more than them. Absolutely right. They have dominated pretty much in every way and every team. One game five is all we saw from them. The rest were three O's or two O's. Two, two maps dropped this entire weekend. Very, very impressive. These Americans coming over the border to win on Canadian soil. I'm sure that feels good. I'm sure it does. And we're going to be bringing in one of the members for a chance for an interview. Looks like we're going to be bringing God Bowser onto this desk. And I'm going to take a second and I'm, I'm going to step away, bring him on for you, Zarin, to hopefully interview. So God Bowser, come on over. I'm just going to hand it over to you. Thank you, thank you. Well, welcome onto the stream and congratulations. It's been a long weekend, but uh, I'll just start simple. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Um, honestly, I was slamming. Um, <laughs> I'm glad we won. Team, we were, teammates were playing fucking phenomenal. And honestly, I'm just happy. Um, I get to go home. 3-0. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, you guys just pretty much destroyed everybody this weekend with, with the exception of Conwa, which you were still up 2-0 in that series and were well on your way to, you know, beating them convincingly as well. What went right for you guys all weekend? Um, honestly, just teamwork. Um, me and Driz, um, we were IGLing for Wisers and Rispy. They honestly have not scrimmed uh, the entire year. And um, we were doing our best uh, to IGL for them. Um, they've been grinding S&D. They were making play calls on S&D. So honestly, just we really meshed well together. How important was, or how important is your experience uh, with this team for yourself and Driz as well? Obviously, you guys play more uh, the challenger scene and bringing on Wisers and Rispy. Um, how were you guys able to implement them into your kind of setup, especially in the response? Um, I would say just um, honestly, just like IGLing the entire time, like like telling them where to go on the map. Um, uh, playing together, waiting for each other. Um, and then S&Ds, um, honestly, the same thing. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Well, last question for you. How are you guys going to celebrate? I know you said you wanted to go home, but uh, is there any team dinner or a celebration um, across the border? Yeah, we're probably going to go to the steakhouse. Oh, nice. Um, and celebrate, maybe go to a casino. 
uh, the Caesars Casino. That's right over here. It's a good spot. Yeah. Very good spot here in Windsor. Well, congratulations again. Thank you, man. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you. And uh, a big win. We'll pass it back over to Colin as uh, we wrap things up here for TXP. Your grand finals champion is going to be Pulsive as God Bowser lifts the trophy here on stream. And, well, what a weekend it's been, Colin. Unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable. You got to say, I mean, uh, for God Bowser, it's as simple as, you know, they had an idea, they came in, they execute, and now they're champions for this one. I imagine this might be over towards the um, the MVP, maybe. It's the, the smaller trophy. You saw God Bowser. He had, the, he had the bigger trophy. This one, at the moment, just for show. But they, they deserve it. And I, I couldn't be more impressed. And, you know, the turnout here at TXP3, you know, I just want to say thank you to all the people that came out, whether it was to spectate the event, to watch it online, or even to compete. We had such a great Canadian turnout as yes. well. Lots of locals, lots of people who we've seen across the years just show their passion for the game. And it was a really fun weekend. Very fun weekend indeed. And just a quick shout out to AMD St. Clair College for making this all possible. And as well as the management team, uh, Brother Jammer, as well as uh, Valerie uh, from the St. Clair side who helped put everything together. Uh, what a, what an unbelievable staff that we had here. Just make every, everything possible was just so nice. And obviously to have us on, it was a privilege. And you to be back here at St. Clair College five years later when you first enrolled. So uh, it's nice to have you back here, Colin. What a thrill it's been all weekend, man. It's fun to be back. We can't forget about the broadcast team either Absolutely, because yes. I mean, it's a tight ship here at St. Clair. And, it, you know, it's not a professional run broadcast is run by the students of St. Clair College and they put on such a fantastic show here for TXP3. So show some love to the students of St. Clair as well for making this all happen for you guys to enjoy and to watch as well as um, our two casters, uh, Matthias as well as uh, Den Den sorry, Daniel uh, coming into the to the uh, the desk to help out for you and I. It was a grand old time, but there and all fun things. They need to come to an end eventually. So, folks, for TXP, I mean, it's been a great one for number three. Hoping to see a number four down the line as it has been just so much fun. But for now, make sure you're staying tuned with everything that is St. Clear here on stream for Saints Gaming CEA. It's been a blast, Zarin. But for all you at home, take care and have a good night.